Welcome to PowerCode Music. In this presentation, we're going to discuss the Zoom R20 multi-track recorders, flaws and fixes. If you own a Zoom R20 or you're thinking about purchasing one, you shouldn't miss a minute of this presentation. This is because we're going to analyze some of the unit's flaws and explore the fixes as well as discuss new product features that have been released. Just about every professional digital multi-track recorder in production today has flaws. We know this. Zoom R20 is no exception to the rule. The good news is that digital multi-track recorders are much easier to maintain with less frequency than that of digital audio workstation software products. With this, Zoom has also been consistent over the life of the R product line to release updates and address and correct many issues. If you own an R20 and you haven't updated to the latest firmware version, then you are doing yourself a disservice. You might ask yourself how? Well, it's pretty simple. This is because previous firmware versions can not only have a negative effect, uh, or should I say even negative technical effects on your recordings, that is your music, they don't include the newer fixes and features that can significantly improve your sessions and productions. Also, please keep in mind that some limitations regarding external hardware multi-track recorders like the Zoom R20 are based on how the product is used as opposed to how the product is intended to be used. That's a big deal. Just like digital audio workstation software products, Regarding external hardware multi-track recorders, one size does not fit all. To keep prices for these units economical, some sacrifices must be made. Now let's take a look at the bug fixes Zoom has released for the R20 at the time of this presentation. Version 2.0 is the current firmware released for the unit during this presentation. Bug fixes in this firmware release include an issue where an unexpected file loss occurs. And the second is that Zoom says it corrected some minor unspecified bug fixes, but they don't go into detail as to what those minor bug fixes are. Function updates include a new control surface function that's compliant with Mackie control, and it enables transport features for mixing on DAW software. For details on how to operate all of the firmware version 2's newest features, refer to the R20 version 2 supplementary manual. Now the latest firmware update file and supplementary manual can be downloaded directly from Zoom's website. Check it out if you haven't already. Now we'll review how to update the firmware on the Zoom R20. First. Check the firmware version of the R20 by tapping the COG icon on the project screen. The system screen will appear. Tap firmware version and the firmware version screen will appear. If the R20 firmware version is the same as the latest firmware version on Zoom's website, then you're good to go. Nothing else to do. If not, then download the latest firmware version from Zoom's website. After you do this, you'll notice that this will be a compressed zip file extract all of the zip file contents to the hard drive on your Mac or PC. Then copy the R20 system.bin file to an SD card. Make sure that the R20 is turned off first and then insert the SD card with the firmware update file in it to the R20. On the R20, press and hold the play button while simultaneously turning on the R20. Once you do this, the update systems screen will appear on the R20. Press the REC or record button and the firmware update will begin. After the process starts, don't turn off the power or remove the SD card from the unit because you could break the system OS and then cause the unit not to start. After the firmware update is done, restart the R20 and you should be good to go. Now, for any reason, if the firmware update process fails, repeat the firmware update process from the beginning to end again. Let's discuss an R20 issue when using Pro Tools on Windows. In June 2022, Zoom addressed a significant issue with the Pro Tools DAW software by Avid. 
This problem relates to the R20 and other R series models such as the R8, the R16, and the R24 when they're used as an audio interface with Pro Tools version 2022.04. This issue relates to the unit failing to initialize or start up in this specific setup or configuration. Now Zoom's fix or workaround for this issue is not to update to Pro Tools software version 2022.04. That is if you're using that particular software. If you've already upgraded to the next version of Pro Tools in this scenario, then try rolling it back if at all possible. Either way, be sure to check Zoom's website regularly for updates on this specific issue. Let's review the R20's audio input jack configuration. One of the most consistent complaints that I hear about the R20 is its audio input design. Many see this as a flaw. Now Zoom's intended use here is that inputs one and two are to connect mics, keyboards, and guitars. These uh, inputs support XLR and quarter inch phone uh, unbalanced plugs. These are combo jacks. Inputs three through eight, however, are intended to connect mics and keyboards and support XLR plugs only. This is how Zoom intended this to be used. Many folks who complained about this configuration wanted or expected combo jacks as opposed to XLR jacks only for inputs three through eight. A fix for this issue for most who wanted to use quarter inch cables would be to submix. When submixing, a separate external eight channel or higher mixer can be used to connect keyboards, sound modules, drum machines, and more. Now the way that this would work is the stereo outputs of the external submixer are then connected to the R20's input jacks one and two. In this way, two or more channels from the external mixer can be routed to the R20 for recording. On the R20, once a track or tracks are selected for recording, the sound input through the related input jacks will be recorded. The, so this solution allows users to overcome the quarter inch input jack limitations that have caused them concern. Let's move on to another issue whereas the Zoom R20 has no track bounce function. For many of us, an external hardware multi-track recorder that doesn't have a track bounce function is a flaw. <laughs> this is because bouncing tracks allows users to free up space to record additional tracks. Let's examine a process solution or workaround to this challenge on the Zoom R20. For the two or more tracks that you would like to bounce, turn their pan knobs to the center position. Then select the track that you want to bounce and assign them as stereo tracks. Record those tracks and then save them in the project to a file. Export the recorded tracks to the unit's SD card as a .wav file. Use a third-party application like Audacity, which is free, to split the stereo file into two separate mono files. Finally, import one of the mono files back into the R20 for your project. The alternative track bounce process is now complete. The R20's version 1 MIDI implementation is very limited. R20's version 1 MIDI lacks basic and important features such as control change, system exclusive, song position, and clock commands. The unit's initial MIDI implementation does not allow users to use a MIDI pedal to remotely control the unit. This will be useful in many such cases such as punching in and out while recording and or starting and stopping a recording. At this point, the primary solution to this issue is to lobby Zoom to add these MIDI features and more to the upcoming firmware releases for the Zoom R20. Now, this is the key. If enough users request it, Zoom may comply. For details on the R20's MIDI version 1 implementation, watch my presentation, Zoom R20 Multitrack Recorder, MIDI Implementation Explained, 
on this channel. Let's move on to another issue. Zoom R20 has no remote foot switch functionality. Now we touched on this flaw when we discussed the lack of MIDI features on the unit. There is currently no way to remotely control the R20. Units such as the Tascam DP24 has a built-in foot pedal connection on the back panel that allow users to remotely control that unit. That unit includes features such as start, stop, rewind, punch in, punch out, and more. Those are the remote features that I believe the R20 should have and many others would tend to agree. Again, a primary solution to this issue is to lobby Zoom to add these features to future MIDI firmware updates. Now that would allow users to add, for instance, a MIDI pedal to the USB port in order to remotely control some functionality in the unit. If enough users request it, Zoom may comply. In summary, for more information on firmware updates for other gear in your home studio, watch my presentation, Free Studio Gear Upgrades, on this channel. Well, that's a wrap. If you like this presentation, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen now to join our group. We have new presentations coming out every 7 to 14 days and we would love to have you be a part of our team. Also, leave a comment in the comment section. Let us know what you think about this presentation. And check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify. While you're here, listen to some of the other music, check out some of the other videos. Let us know what you think about that too. Thank you so much for stopping by. We really do appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you soon.